Ego. Consider this to be something in the nature of an addendum to my heartfelt videotape narrative, common decency or lack thereof, in which I express my opinion that although you were officially adopted at birth by Norman and Linda Shapiro, your adoption amounted to a kidnapping, a sequestro, and I suspect the Shapiros took advantage of Miss Davies's confused, disoriented state of mind at the time to accomplish their purpose of adopting a wasp child. N'importe comment and at n'importe quel prix. Even going to the extent of specifying to the person interposé, interposé uh, the doctor, well remunerated, moreover, for his efforts, that they wanted an infant with blue eyes and blonde hair. Perhaps, just perhaps, if Linda Davies had benefited from counseling by a disinterested third party on the gravity of the decision to give up her firstborn, she would have changed her mind and revoked her consent. But money is a powerful persuader. The rest is superfluous, without real importance. All this is in the past now, et on peut pas faire marche arrière. Often in life, it is not the first mistake that condemns us, but the second one, the cover-up. And in this case, it was the non-disclosure agreement which Miss Davies signed, which barred her from officially revealing the truth in writing. Hence, the relationship which I maintained with your mother afterwards was the folk, farcical. Linda Davies persisted in saying that I was your real father, but when challenged, refused to put it in writing and urged me to be more spiritual. In other words, don't ever ask me that again. Several months after you were born, your mother began dating Robert Ostro, M.D., an unfriendly fellow in my view, antique méchant, whom I saw only once, but once it was enough. Effectively, he persuaded her to abandon our mutually agreed plans to regain custody within the grace period. I was still in Salisbury, Southern Rhodesia, when you were born, having traveled there thanks to a job offer tendered by Roy Walensky, ex-Prime Minister of Northern Rhodesia, before the breakup of the Federation. After your mother met Ostro, MD, she appeared to have completely abandoned any plans of getting you back, glamoured by the prestige of marrying a doctor and therefore acquiring financial security. Linda never again spoke to me of you in that context. I cautioned her against marrying Ostro, intimating that he seemed to have an imperious nature, that he would repress her, rob her of her Welshness, individuality, and my hunch is that he did all of the above. Speaking on the phone with her often in the years following the marriage was akin to conversing with somebody who to me had been brainwashed. In fact, Ostrov never encouraged her to take classes to get a college degree, yet that was the ostensible reason Linda Davies immigrated to the U.S take advantage of opportunities here, unavailable by and large to women in the UK. Recall also that beginning in the mid-1960s, women's liberation, awareness of the need thereof, was uppermost. Betty Friedan published The Feminine Mystique, and one witnessed the emergence of other great feminist writers like Germaine Greer, Kate Mallette, and Flora Pine, who coined the phrase consciousness raising. Gloria Steinem gained the notoriety as the publisher and chief editor of Ms. Magazine, also managed the political campaign of Norman Mailer for mayor in 1969, where I met her as a volunteer. However, I suspect that your mother, fulfilling the role of a dutiful wife who knew her place vis-a-vis -vis the, the overbearing magisterial Robert Ostro like a vassal to his lordship, missed all of that, which was a shame. Believe that with the right encouragement, Linda would have fulfilled herself, had her consciousness raised, and found the stamina to reacquire custody of you, which few family court judges would have denied her if it had come to that, and raised you on her own, which would have been the best solution for both of you. In 1987, I undertook a voyage to Découverte to find out what had become of you both, and thanks in part to a former state investigator, was successful. Returned to rugby where Linda spent her youth in a majestic house on High Street, 
in the backyard, which was narrow, but seemed to go on for miles. Spent time also with the Madden family. His daughter, Susan, was a personal friend of Linda and Linda's sister, Jane, deceased. Visited former colleagues at Rugby School, where Linda was employed as personal secretary to the bursary, Philip Snow, world, world-class cricketer and brother of C.P. Snow, the famous novelist. Also ventured down Willow Road, where her late father, Tom Davies, had his place of business, Willow Engineering. A ce propos, Mrs. Madden, Susan's mother, described for me Tom Davies' unusual habit of walking around town very early each morning as if he were fighting off demons which tormented him premonition. As you might know, both parents, Tom and Kathleen Davies, killed themselves in a double suicide, a tragedy not widely uh, reported in the local and national press at the time. During the weeks spent in rugby, I also visited Normandy Farms, where close friends of Linda lived. Normandy, as in William and Normandy, 1066 and all that. Met other teachers at rugby school who complained that foreign students, mainly from China, could not write a literate paragraph. Dare I say that little of this is of interest to you, since in the past, when I wrote you about our respective families, you showed little patience, seemed not to have cared less. Generation gap, no doubt. As I mentioned in my previous videotaped address, I should say too about the ad adoption. Thanks to the efforts of a private investigator who accomplished the seemingly impossible task of having records supposedly sealed for life, unsealed. Attorneys whom I spoke with could not believe it. I can tell you where Norman Shapiro is buried, Mount Hebron Cemetery in Queens, where other deceased adherents of the Orthodox faith are also interred. I also know the exact address of the building where he lived in Crown Heights and the yeshiva which he attended in his youth. The purpose of this videotape dress is not an advertisement for myself, written in order to show off my investigative talents and tenacity, but to suggest to you that if indeed you bear a resentment over having been adopted, held his opinion as well, then do something about it. Therefore, I propose that you make a clean breast of it, pay due recognition to your ethnic religious roots, and choose a surname that reflects your lineage. Who ever heard of a Welshman with a surname of Shapiro anyway? Thus, show audacity and stamina, and inform the Shapiros that you intend to change your surname to Harrison Davies to reflect your true origins. C'est à toi de juger. Keeping the first name Jack is fine with me, since a late uncle of mine was named Jack. But if you want to be right with the world and with yourself, if you want to put an end to the subterfuge, then, in the words of the late great revolutionary Jerry Rubin, do it. Otherwise, you will never know inner peace. Thus, my proposition is that you assume the surname Harrison Davies and not be afraid of the metamorphosis. You would be known as Jack Harrison Davies, your two well-behaved, self-effacing sons as Olivier Harrison Davies and Maximilian Harrison Davies, and your dear distant spouse as Kim Harrison Davies. Linda would agree that hyphenated surnames sound very county-county. It's up to you, Eho, and remember, there's no one like your dad. Let me add that, as it is with people, who, return, who seek to return to, to their roots, who seek to reacquire their authenticity. The same is true for newly independent nations of North and Sub-Saharan Africa, which I know well, having earned my living in those places for years. Thus, when Algeria was an ensemble of prefectures and départements in pre-independence uh, days before 1962, there was the Rue Michelet in the capital city, but his name changed after independence and became Laoui ben Mehdi after the FLN revolutionary, who was the author of numerous attentats, plastic bombings which led Prime Minister Guy Mollet in 1956 to dispatch the 10th Paratroop Division to extirpate FLN terrorism, using Valladolid waterboarding and the Jejen electric shock treatments to elicit information from Algerians suspected of the bombings of cafes and brasseries. 
1957, Lauby ben Mahidi was hanged by paratroopers under the command of, of uh, Colonel Marcel Bijal. But your father interviewed ben Mahidi's successor, Yasef Sadi, in his home in the heights of Algiers in 1990, long after the war had ended and passions had been decanted. Changing the name of Rue Michelet to Rue Lauby ben Mahidi and Place du Duc d'Orléans to Place des Martyrs in favor of Mujahideen, who had perished during the eight years long struggle for independence, led to other historic uh, revisions, all done in the name of effacing Algeria's colonial past and helping the country to regain its authenticity. Even Yaouled's Shushan boys were banned in the streets of Algiers and Iran after independence, since they appeared to symbolize subservience to the Colon, reminders of the country's past under French rule. Likewise in Zaire, later named Democratic Republic of the Congo, but originally called the Belgian Congo, measures were taken in 1971 under the iron rule of Sese Seko uh, Mobutu, the Bismarck of Africa, to erase its past of European domination. Thus Leopoldville, named after King Leopold, became Kinshasa. Stanleyville, named after the explorer Henry Martin Stanley, became Kissinjani. Elizabethville in the province of Katanga became Lumumbashi after the deceased uh, uh, Patrice Lumumba. And Katanga became Shaba since it contained copper reserves greater than any other region in the world. Sese Seko Mobutu changed his baptismal name given to him by Methodist missionaries Joseph Mobutu to an authentic African name cited above. Jack Mofis let Sese Seko Mobutu be your guide, your role model. The Bismarck of Africa regained his authenticity by reverting to his tribal origins. Fekun Lee, you are no more a Shapiro than I am. Not to Benny, that before embarking on my quest to find out what had become of both of you, I sought the advice of Jan Morris, formerly James Morris, before her sex change. Morris, who is Welsh, is one of the great historians of the 20th century, author of such uh, magisterial works as Pax Britannica, a trilogy. Your father has read all three books in the trilogy. I told Miss Morris about Linda and she was sympathetic, informing me of a saying of the mythological wealth, Welsh wise man, Eden Hisbis, and confided to me that his homily would bring me luck. Met Morris at her book signing at the old Endicott bookstore, which has since gone the way of other independent booksellers, located then on 81st in Columbus. This was in 1987, when Morris was pushing her latest book, Manhattan, so hugely successful that even native New Yorkers who thought they knew everything about the city remarked that reading it was a learning trip. But I digress. Consider my proposal, which may be the only way that you will achieve la paix intérieure. As they say in the idiom of Abelé, il faut ce qu'il faut. Hope to hear from you and amuse-toi bien, which in plain old Anglo-Saxon English means have a nice day. Sincerely, Alexander Harrison. A necessary postscript to the above is that if you were to summon the stamina and moral courage to change your last name to one that corresponds to your true lineage, you might very well lose the sympathy of that click, clique in De De Detroit and Birmingham Township, which seems straight out of central casting for a film based on Stephen Birmingham's Our Crowd. Withdrawal of financial support from Linda Shapiro is another eventuality, but just tell yourself, peu importe. All things considered, I believe it would be worth it for you. You practice a, a, a branch of social science, forensic psychology, in which this trust between patient and therapist is a sine qua, a sine qua non of, of a productive interaction. Suppose one of your subjects were to view this video and say to you one day, Dr. Shapiro, you ask us to trust you with our innermost thoughts and feelings, but does it not work both ways? This fellow Alexander Harrison has asserted he is your real father and urges you not to hide behind his pseudonym, Shapiro. To reclaim your authenticity and change your last name to Harrison Davies, what is your objection? What would be your response to that question? 
question that often, and this is my final word, if you will permit. Each time I spoke to Lynn on the phone, her voice was so guilt-ridden that I was reminded of the ancient Marini who had just killed the albatross. No reason to go through life like that. Linda Davies committed the irremediable generations ago, but that was then and this is now. And it is time for her as well to break with the past, emerge from the shadows, and live in the present. Life is a moving reality, and we must move, move with it. Rappelle-toi, il faut ce qu'il faut.